Uh, it's been really good so far. Obviously, haven't got to meet him in person yet, but a lot of Zoom calls and, you know, it just, uh, like you said, extremely talented room. And I just look to come in and do whatever I can to help. What's up, Browns fans? Nathan Zagura here with another edition of Browns Working From Home. And this time, our guest, Browns rookie tight end, Harrison Bryant. We talked to him after the draft. I know everybody's excited to have him here. Harrison, how are you doing? What's it been like since the draft for you? Um, it's, it's been really good. Uh, obviously, extremely excited to get up to Cleveland and get to work in the facilities and, and with my new teammates. But as of right now, just a lot of Zoom calls, uh, recording workouts to post uh, to get credit and just a lot of creativity to, to get the workouts in and, and learn the new playbook without being able to be in the facility. What's it been like for you in this tight end room? You've got a, a two-time Pro Bowler in Austin Hooper. You've got a former first-rounder in David Njoku. You've got some young guys like Farrell Brown, Steve Carlson, et cetera. You come into the mix. How have they kind of welcomed you into this Browns tight end fraternity? Uh, it's been really good so far. Obviously, haven't got to meet him in person yet, but a lot of Zoom calls and you know, it just, uh, like you said, extremely talented room. And I just look to come in and do whatever I can to help the, the tight end room improve and do whatever I can to help the team win. So it's been really good so far. And I feel uh, accepted into the room and just ready to get to work with them. Any banter from them about the fact that you got to play in an offense that featured the tight end so heavily you got to go for a thousand yards, which hadn't been done in, in almost a decade? Yeah, um, n not too much from them, but, uh, you know, uh, successful college career, just looking to, come and do whatever I can to try to repeat that in the coming years and, and like I said do whatever I can to help the team win you know it is a tight end friendly offense but that means there's a lot to learn and I remember I talked to Austin Hooper when he just joined the Browns and he said it, it really does take a year or two even in the NFL because you need to know everything in the pass game then you need to know everything in the run game and you're almost like an extra lineman out there how has that learning process been for you because I'm sure it is a ton of information yeah, it's, it's a lot of information. Uh, luckily, before the virtual rookie mini camp, I was able to be on calls with Coach Petsing and kind of get a, a week or two head start. And then, obviously, the rookie mini camp, and then now thrown into the meetings with the veterans. So it's been really good so far. Uh, a lot of studying, a lot of extra time watching the film and, and breaking it down. But so far, it's been good. But like you said, it's, it's a lot of information, and it, it takes time to master it. And I really feel like, you, you master it the best when you're on the field, able to get reps with it. So I think that's going to come when we're able to start getting on the field and, and getting looks at it. It's when it becomes really se second nature. Now, when you watch a lot of your highlights, we see you split out in the slot, running around like a wide receiver. And you'll do some of that, obviously, in this offense, but a lot will be in line and a lot will be kind of in this flow, of this wide zone scheme. Is that something that you had any experience with? Yeah, actually, um, at FAU, uh, zone zone scheme was our biggest thing, uh, wide zone, tight zone. So I feel like I definitely have a feel for that so far. And whether that's front side of it, back side of it, I definitely think that uh, I've learned some, some key details throughout college. But obviously there's going to be a lot of new stuff to pick up on and a lot of new co coaching points. And like I said, ready to get in and just learn all those and, and just work to get better. One of the things I noticed, we were watching your tape against Ohio State, and obviously he had the six catches, 79 yards, great game receiving, made some big plays down the seam, big plays against the Cuda, but there was one pass play where you were asked to go one-on-one -on -one with one of the Buckeyes' defensive ends, and you did a great job on that. And in this scheme, every now and then, they'll have the tight end slide over and pick up a backside end. Is that something that you enjoy, the pass blocking, and is that something that you really want to continue to, to evolve in your game? Yeah, I definitely feel, um, you know, kind of, I feel comfortable doing that, uh, playing offensive line early in my career. Uh, you know, obviously, it's blocking a different type of, of talent now, though. Uh, usually, as a defensive, as a tight end blocking a defensive end now at this level, you're, you're a little outmatched. But uh, I, I really think it's all about just being willing to do it and work the technique that you're taught. And I, and I think that I'm capable of that. Just, just keep improving and really try to become a complete tight end. I talk about that transition because you went from lineman to tight end and now here you are, Mackie Award winner, the number one tight end in the nation, drafted into the NFL. At the time when you were playing lineman, did it ever even occur to you that you would be going, you know, into the NFL as a tight end someday? Uh, no, not, not at all because I played uh, offensive line and defensive end and, and I was like, the tight end was like the last thought in my mind and then my senior year, my high school coach, she was like, I think it would be good for you to play tight end and wasn't highly recruited, ended up at FAU, and, and now I'm here just 
you know, a lot of good teammates, a lot of good coaches and a lot of hard work and it, it paid off and just looking to continue to, to have success and, and help the team win. Does that coach remind you often? Hey, remember when I, remember when I came up with this crazy idea to have you play tight yeah. end? Yeah, he does. I was actually up at my high school this morning working out and we were talking about it then. So I, we're always talking about it. So it's, it's pretty cool to just, you know, I, I thank him a lot and, and try to do whatever I can for him because without him, I wouldn't really be in this position. So he's, he's played a big role in my football career. That's a very cool story. And speaking of you're out the high school, you're working out. What are you doing from a physical standpoint? Mentally, we know you're diving in that playbook. You're, you're watching the film. You're getting the verbiage down. What are you able to do physically during this time? Um, the, the past few months, I've been down in Boca uh, near FAU just working out. Had a little home gym going. Uh, they, the Browns were able to send some dumbbells and stuff and made a little rack. So, obviously, you know, lifting weights and stuff and then getting on the field whenever I could to, to catch balls with um, a quarterback from FAU and then just, just conditioning, just the basic stuff. But uh, with the quarantine and everything, it's been difficult trying to find parks open or gyms open or places to recovery. So it, it's – you have to definitely be creative, but I, I feel like I've uh, made the best of it so far and, you know, and excited to get in the facility and really see it, see the whole facility and just be able yeah. to work out in there and recover there and, you know, world-class facility. Um, just extremely excited. I know everybody is eager to get back and we're certainly eager to have you guys back here. Now, you know, shooters, they talk about in hoops, oh, I got to make a thousand shots today or 250 shots today. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain number of, of balls that you want to catch? on a daily basis or is it just one day you're going to do strength another day you're going to do routes yeah. etc um throughout the week I, I usually have like a weekly number i want to do or uh like three days a week i'm gonna catch balls two days a week i'm gonna work um run blocking and and usually like lift it's like i'll lift four or five days a week i'll try to run routes two days a week and then like in a total i'll be catching balls four days a week so it's it's, it's just a, a lot of made up methods that I've, <laughs> that have worked for me in the past. So I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of superstitious. So I just keep with that pattern and it's worked with me so far. Do you have to end on a particular type of catch? Is it a one handed catch or does it have to just have that perfect sound when it gets right into the, yeah, the hands? Got, got to end never, never end on a drop, no matter how tired you are or anything, got to end on a, on a nice catch and finish the day off good. So you mentioned doing some stuff to work on your run blocking. How are you? I'm sure it's obviously hard. There's nobody to actually block given the circumstances mm -hmm. out there. So is it more the technique, the steps? How are you working on that? And then get yeah. back, obviously, with coach. Um, the biggest thing is really the technique, like you said, uh, first step, second step, hand placement, and using the hips. And with our virtual offseason, we, we post our workouts, and we also post our position drills. So we're able to um, – have coach comment on our on our drills and and comment what we need to work on so it's it's oh. been cool so far um getting those coaching points but it's 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 helped but it's just not the same as uh being hands-on with the coach and stuff but um definitely feel like i've been improving that so far just picking up on the little details that he's been able to share over um the virtual stuff Absolutely. And I'm sure that, that it's valuable. And I'm sure you can't wait, to, as Bill Callahan, the offensive line coach, said, to get out on the grass when they can get their hands on you mm -hmm. and really yeah. demonstrate these techniques for you. How is this tight end room? Because Austin, from my experience, uh, is, is a fun guy. David Ajoku, the chief, a, a great personality. Carlson, Farrow, et cetera. How's it kind of mm -hmm. just been from just, I know you, you, it's easier when you get to be with somebody rather than on Zoom, but what's kind of the, the tone, I would say, of, of that tight end room? Um, it's, it's definitely entertaining in the meetings. Um, like before the coach petsing will start teaching stuff, we'll, we'll just have conversation and stuff, but you can definitely tell that, you know, everybody's in there to work. And, uh, when it's, there's a time to talk and there's a time to lock in. And I think that everybody in there kind of has that understanding. And, and like you said, it's some great personalities. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun to get in the room and, and just be with those guys. And, you know, it's, it's fun when people are that talented, but also, can just have fun with other teammates and stuff. So it's, I'm excited and it's going to be a fun year. seems like there are a few people down in Florida. Have you been able to get together with any uh, of the guys at all, or you've just been doing on in your own thing? Um, I haven't been able to get together with uh, any of the guys, but um, I mean, I've been in touch with some of the guys, uh, Brandon Bryant, he played at FAU. So I've been able to talk to him about some of the things going on. Haven't talked too much about it because the new, the new staff, he hasn't really been around them either. Sure. But uh, just talking about the city and the past, what's, what it's been like. So it's been really good. 
So when you think about leaving Florida, where it's been lovely, now it hasn't been such so great here weather-wise in Cleveland, coming to Cleveland, what's kind of the first thing that pops in your mind? Um, obviously the cold, but – oh, oh, sorry. You're all right. I'm back. Honestly, yes, back. Um, the cold weather, but uh, being from Georgia, it gets chilly here, but nothing like Ohio, but I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, I've played a few cold games and, and – you know, I feel like I can adapt to it, and I'm excited to get up there. You won't, you won't be sweating every day at practice, so that's, that's – people were cramping up like week 10 during practice because it was so hot, so it's going to be a lot better in terms of that. As somebody who spent six years in Atlanta, I can tell you August in Cleveland is nothing like August in, in Atlanta <laughs> or certainly like down in Florida. It, it, you will not have the same experience, so that part of it yeah. – will certainly be very good for you. Uh, when you think about just, you know, this, this offense and the things that you're learning in this offense, you said a lot of Stephanie Collins is based off that, that zone scheme. Uh, a lot of two tight end looks, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It is tight end friendly. What has just kind of been your overall impressions of it? And, and were you fortunate enough to have any verbiage carry over or are you learning a totally new language? Um, a, a little bit has carried over. Uh, the, the most carryover I've seen is from being at the Senior Bowl. Um, okay. learning the verbiage there from the Bengals, which Coach Van Pelt came from. So there's been some carryover there. And um, a lot of kind of similar passing schemes and routes and stuff, different verbiage, but kind of, um, you know, can, can picture those routes and tie the words together some way. And like you said, a lot of 12 personnel, 13 personnel. So it's a lot of stuff to learn, but it's an exciting outlook, especially with the tight end room that, that we have. It's, it's going to be fun. Does anybody run any 13 personnel in college? Um, not well, – FAU – I don't think so. Like one play out of the three years I was there. So, it's cool <laughs> to see if that's that, – that's in the game plan. So, that was pretty cool. What's kind of just your overall impressions of the staff and the way that, you know, they've handled it from Coach Stefanski to Alex Van Pelt to your room with Drew Petson? Um, it's been really good so far. Everybody's extremely energetic. Um, they, they're all here for us. Um, you, you can tell that just over Zoom. Usually you can't really tell um, until you're in person, but just the way everybody carries themselves through meetings and, you know, they're, they're really here to help us learn and, and help us win and they're going to do whatever it takes to win and you can tell that. All right. What do you like to do in the, in the few? Because I'm sure you're studying very diligently, no doubt about that. But when you are able to take a few hours for yourself, get away from it, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I'm, a, I'm an outdoors man. I love being outside. Uh, in Florida, it was going to the beach and fishing and hunting, but uh, I, I know there's some good hunting in Ohio and, and some fishing, but I don't know about the beach there, but I'll definitely be outdoors and just enjoying the, the nice weather until it gets too chilly. You'll have to talk to Browns legend Joe Thomas whenever he's around. Yep, he's an that's, avid, that's an avid outdoors the, uh, man. Fishman, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Harrison, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Best of luck in the preparations. And we certainly all hope, like you do, we can get to Cleveland, meet you face-to-face, -face, and uh, have you see you get to work on what should be a successful 2020 campaign.